Hi, hello, hi. So today I want to talk to you all about stimming. Mostly what I'm going to be doing is reviewing some stim toys. I'm going to be reviewing some that were sent to me from this really cool subscription service called Chewy Gem. But I'm also going to be talking about my favorite stim toys, stimming on a budget, all that good stuff. So before we start, I want to start by explaining what stimming is. So stimming is self-stimulatory behaviors or self-stimulatory actions. Not everyone stims in the same way. Stimming isn't something that is necessarily exclusive to neurodiverse individuals. Neurotypical people may stim as well. For example, leg bouncing. Sometimes neurotypical people will leg bounce when they're nervous or when they're focusing or when they've had too much caffeine or pacing or like twirling your hair, stuff like that. It's kind of like fidgeting. Those are all things that could be stims, but usually they'll be doing it and it's like, it's not like they can't function if they don't do it. They're doing it because they're bored or restless or nervous or distracted. Whereas for neurodiverse individuals, particularly those with autism or those with ADHD, the reason why it's called self-stimulatory behavior, why it's called stimming is because that stimulus is having an effect on the way that that person is functioning. So for example, with someone with ADHD, if they're fidgeting, it might be to help them focus. I made a whole video about what ADHD is and I explained the theory that I am most fond of, which is the theory that ADHD comes from low levels of dopamine. So fidgeting with something might be helping their brain be a little more constant with the production of dopamine because it's something kind of fun and entertaining to do and because of that it might help them focus because their brain won't be jumping from one place to the other to the other to be trying to get the dopamine that they want. Or if there's someone who deals with physical hyperactivity, it might be helping them get some of those physically hyperactive feelings out. If someone with autism, for example, or a sensory processing disorder, which is something that so often is hand in hand with autism, self-stimulatory behavior might better help regulate outside stimulation. So because so many of us are so sensitive to stimulation, having something that is comforting, so something that is a stimulation you like, maybe soothing, and that's a stimulation you could really focus on, and because we're so sensitive to the stimulation, having Having something pleasant that is stimulating you, it has a more profound effect on you. It's not merely that like, I like it, but it's that like, this is literally helping my brain release chemicals that calm me down because this feeling is so intense to me and so calming to me that it's having a calming effect on myself. People could also stim absent-mindedly, like I just, I rock myself a lot and I'm not always consciously thinking about it. I'm not always like, wow, this feels great. It's just like something that, <laughs> that my body does. So yeah. Without further ado, we're gonna get into stimming toys. And just before we start, you don't necessarily need to have physical things to stim with. You could stim with your own body, but sometimes for reasons of like safety, hazards, stuff like that, it is safe to have some of these, especially given the nature of some of these stims. So let me just get into it and it'll make more sense to you. So I was sent this box from Chewy Gem which is a website that makes stim toys and they are starting a subscription service. I'm not being paid to say any of this, I'm just telling you, I think it was just really sweet of them to ask me if I wanted a box and I really wanted to show you all. I got this sweet little thank you card. So I ordered two things in my box from them. The main focus of the stim toys on their website seems to be chewable stim toys. Chewing is a type of stim growing up. I used to chew on the strings to my hoodies. I used to chew on my hair a lot. Yeah, I was that kid. I am older now and I I've always had EDS, but my EDS has gotten worse as I got older, so my teeth are a lot looser, meaning that chewing is sometimes not very safe for me. Um, my bite changes very easily. I could easily crush the root of my tooth, even if I'm not biting into something hard, but if I just bite it at the wrong angle, I just, you know, I have a connective tissue disorder. So my chewing stim is not always the best one, but I found some of this stuff really useful for me. They sent me a little squishy ball. Oh, cool. A little notepad too. So the first thing they sent me that I'm really excited to show you is this bracelet. This is a bracelet that on one side is red and it says, leave me be. And on the other side is green and it says, talk to me. And I think these are awesome, both for adults and kids. I got the kid size because I have very, very tiny wrists. I think these are especially cool at like conventions and stuff like that. I deal with selective mutism and I've always found it a kind of odd situation to be in because if I'm having an episode of selective mutism, it's hard to communicate that to others given the fact like, I don't get to preemptively be like, I'm about to become nonverbal now. Like, so sometimes it's just no response from me on my end. And some people might take that badly or think that I'm deliberately ignoring them, but it's just sometimes I just can't communicate. So this is cool. If you have a kid, let's say, who deals with selective mutism or who gets overstimulated in some moments and really seems to want to be left alone, if you teach them how to use this, I think that would be a useful tool and that could avoid meltdowns because sometimes 
if you're in such a heightened state of sensitivity and someone's approaching you and there's this immense frustration of I can't even explain that I can't be approached right now and that I can't express myself right now, that could often lead to having a meltdown. So I think this would be awesome to have in classrooms. They're not super expensive if every kid has one and the teacher teaches the kids how to use them. I think this would be super cool to have in schools with kids, but that's just my humble opinion. The next thing they sent me was this chewable necklace. Um, I thought this would be more of a spinner toy because it says like spinner necklace on the website, but it doesn't really spin. It mostly just hangs in two separate pieces. So this could be worn as a necklace. And both of these things are things you're able to chew on. They're really soft, they're squishy. This is a bit big for me because I have easily dislocated joints that also includes my jaw. So this isn't the ideal toy for me to chew on, but I contacted them and they told me they have a bunch of other chewable jewelry and chewable toys that are smaller and better suited for people with EDS. And they actually knew what EDS was, so I was like, if nothing else, it's cool to like kind of squish and just like fiddle with in your hands. It's like a really nice, smooth, squishy texture. So I feel like it would be good for developing some of the hand and forearm muscles, but that's just my opinion. It is fun to chew on. If you don't have the issues that I have with my teeth, I would suggest this because I like that there are two different densities for this necklace. And I also like that it's two parts because it's kind of fun to play with. I also think that what they're doing is really important, having safe, chewable stim toys, because chewing stims, they could be dangerous because not everything is safe to put in your mouth. A lot of things are choking hazards. Um, a lot of things could hurt you. I mean, your mouth is made of very soft, delicate tissues. Don't do what I do, kids. But before I heard of them and before I got actual chewable stim toys, I used to chew on toothpicks. I really don't suggest it. These are a choking hazard. They're very pointy. I'm only showing you to show you the like before and after. Not safe stims, safe stims. So, all right, so chewing stims aside, other ways to stim on a budget. One of my favorite stims is uh, using hair elastics. I keep these thin hair elastics on my wrist and I play with these all the time. I really like playing with hair elastics, I always have. And on top of it, my hair is long enough on top to tie and I often get overstimulated from my hair hitting me in the face. So usually if I'm not filming a video or not taking any pictures, my hair is going to be tied up. So I like having these on me because it gives me the option to tie my hair when it's getting too much for me, but they're also just so much fun to play with and you just wear them on your wrist. It's super simple, super discreet. Another similar alternative are these things. They look like phone cords and I think they're supposed to be used to tie your hair. Honestly, I don't know how this would work. Maybe it's because my hair is too like soft. I feel like this wouldn't hold my hair in place, but they're fun. You could wear these on your wrist as well. They're a little less discreet, but for someone who wants to have something a little bigger to play with or have something with a little more texture, this is fun. Next, there are weighted little stuffed animals. I got this weighted stim toy from the website Stimtastic, another website I suggest you check out. It's basically a weighted crab. It has a nice little weight to it. It feels nice to just put into the palm of your hand or put on your chest when you're lying down. And I especially love this soft fabric. It's a fabric that's smooth. And because it has that silky feeling, it's also a material that gets cold really quickly. My favorite stim toys in terms of sensation and like something calming instead of something to get like my energy out like this are things that are smooth and cool to the touch. I love when things are cool. I don't like touching warm things or hot things. I don't like sweating. I don't like any of that. I love touching something and having it cool my skin immediately. Anyway, I'm about to get to my favorite stim toy, but this is the before last, almost my favorite stim toy. I know people are going to expect me to review fidget spinners, but I know you all know what fidget spinners are, but I usually don't like fidget spinners. I think that they're big and bulky. I need to place my hands in an awkward position to get them to actually spin, and because of that, it could cause me to sublux my thumb, and usually they're loud. But at some point, I found this cute little spinner on Amazon. It's this tiny disc, really subtle. I could spin this and usually people don't really notice it. It's less of a meme because I know that fidget spinners have become kind of a meme, which is annoying, just let people fidget. It's a little more subtle and it's really quiet. Like, I don't know if you could tell. As much as I love fidget spinners, the sound just drives me up the wall. So this is my second favorite stim toy. And now my absolute favorite stim toy. I'm gonna need you to prepare yourself for this because to anyone who isn't me, it's a, a little scary to look at. Um, so when I was born, my mom got me this doll. Uh, this is my doll. Uh, and it looks terrifying. And I promise it is clean. This is what it looks like after going through the washing machine. It's just that this doll is 25 years old. This is my all time favorite stim. Before being able to speak, before being able to even vividly see colors and shapes, when I would say literal newborn, this was my stim toy. It's hands, which are really soft, even though they're broken right now, they're just made of, again, that really smooth, really cool fabric. I would rub her hands with my hands and it was always really soothing to me. 
and I couldn't sleep without her and to this day I have a lot of trouble sleeping without her. Whenever I'm stressed, even when I don't think it's gonna work, it just does work. This is the most effective stim that I have. Um, it's one that I was ashamed of for a long time, especially when transitioning because I thought I had to reject anything that was feminine, which is like, come on, I've had this since I was born and it's terrifying, like just leave me alone. But I've learned to just embrace it. It's also been very validating to look back on and realize that like, I've stimmed my whole life. Aside from like, you know, I've always been like an arm swinger, a hoodie string chewer, a hair chewer, but like the fact that this has been something that I've had since I was born and that like stimming has been such an integral part of my life since my existence here. I, I don't know, there's something about it that just like feels really validating. Anyway, this this was my first stim. This is my favorite stim. This helps me concentrate sometimes if I'm studying or if I'm editing. It's just like, I know that it's terrifying to you. I'm sorry about that. There's nothing I could do about it. I've tried to replace her with other similar stim toys. This thing feels like it's made of literally almost the exact same fabric as the hands, but it's just, it's just not the same. It doesn't have the same effect on me. Anyway, those are my favorite stim toys. This has been my stimming toy review. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, then maybe I'll review other stim toys. If you have any other stim toys you'd like me to review, let me know and I will review them here for you. Hopefully this wasn't too much all in one video. I kind of wanted to just compile my favorite stim toys and also offer a safe alternative for those who are chewers. My option of chewing toothpicks that I had before is like actually like super duper not safe and should not be done at all. So. Thank you Chewy Gem for sending me that box of cool stuff. Thank you for making safe chewable jewelry and for working toward destigmatizing stimming. I really appreciate it. You should check out their stuff. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week and you take care of yourselves. All right, thanks. Bye.